Mayor Lightfoot is approaching her two-year anniversary in office, and she says she's going to be giving one-on-one -on -one interviews about this with the media, but only to journalists of color. Our political editor, Mike Flannery, joins us in studio with more on this story and some of the controversy that it is uh, sparking. Mike. Well, Anthony and Sally, it's important to note that there are far fewer reporters of any color covering City Hall these days. I remember when 12 to 15 reporters physically went to the hall just about every day to check in. Now there is just a really a small handful who do this. One is a black man, one an Hispanic man. The mayor complains none are women of color. In a written statement, Lifewood said there are zero women of color assigned to the city hall. Beat zero. I find this unacceptable and hope you do too. That was an old uh, picture of me with Harold Washington. It's a resumption of a conversation I've been part of for more than 40 years. Harold Washington was, of course, Chicago's first African-American mayor. He often complained that white reporters, you see me there with Gus Savage, another uh, African-American politician from the South Side who complained uh, about white reporters not understanding some of the metaphors, some of the language that uh, Washington and Gus Savage used. Barack Obama's approach, on the other hand, was very different. Obama is not a native Chicagoan and arrived here as an adult, just like Lightfoot. Unlike Harold Washington a generation earlier, Obama and Lightfoot attended majority white schools and escaped the worst of the segregated world that the uh, late mayor Harold Washington grew up in. Lightfoot declares that white reporters at City Hall should now be accompanied by a black or brown colleague. For the record, I was hired at Channel 2 back in 1980. I had been a Sun-Times uh, City Hall reporter. I was hired to replace an African-American political reporter, Emery King, who had been hired by a national TV network to go cover Capitol Hill and the White House in Washington, D.C. Guys? All right. Well, yeah, this has obviously sparked a conversation, I'm sure not only in our, room, our newsroom, but newsrooms throughout the city. Uh, so we want to dive into this a little bit further. Mike, what kind of reaction is this getting from uh, the City Hall, the current uh, scaled down, as you mentioned, City Hall press corps? Well, you know, I've, I've touched base uh, with uh, several, uh, several people, uh, white and, uh, and Hispanic and African-American. Uh, uh, you know, I, I know just about everybody uh, in this, uh, in, in that part of the, that side of the uh, business. And, um, you know, pe people are acknowledging that uh, this has, th this is a conversation, an important conversation. It's complicated and complex. Um, uh, you know, there are even uh, some Journalists of color have suggested to me that uh, they don't necessarily like the way that uh, Lightfoot phrased this. Harold Washington, for example, used to give exclusives to, uh, to the Chicago Defender. To th there were two, three, four uh, black outlets, maybe five if you count the radios. Um, he'd give them exclusive interviews but wouldn't use this uh, exclusionary language that Lightfoot is using. Maybe not the smartest way to go. Mike, yeah. like you mentioned, it's an important conversation to be having. All newsrooms should be talking about the diversity of their staff because it does affect the stories you cover, how yep. they are covered. That said, is the problem with the mayor leading that conversation? What do you think, Mike? Yeah, there's a big problem. She's, she's uh, very self-interested, um, and she's not shy about that. Um, I, I, I respect uh, Tia Ewing's opinion. I'd love to get yeah. your take on this, Frank Tia. Tia. Well, this is really what I think um, when it comes to the mayor having the conversation, in my opinion, who better than to spark the conversation than someone as uh, largely seen as the mayor of Chicago. I've had people in the city of Chicago, like activists, say the very same thing that oftentimes when there's a murder or something like that or a rally in Chicago, the African-American reporter shows up. Where's the white reporter? All questions that I think are worthy to be heard. Uh, what I think the mayor is doing here that is different is she is a voice. She is a, a icon in, in some respects here in the city. So if she doesn't start that conversation, who else would be the, the person to have it? You may not like how she did it, but I think it was definitely worthy to be brought up. And it's not just what you see on air. You also got to remember newsrooms uh, have people behind the scenes and all of those faces matter. All of those colors matter. All of those ideas matter. And we have to stop being afraid to talk about about real issues. This is a real issue that impacts how people are covered in the city of Chicago, in the suburbs, and I think we have to make sure that those people are reflected, not just right here what you see on TV, but behind the scenes as well. And I applaud the mayor for being courageous enough to even talk about it, to bring forth uh, this conversation. Was it the best way to do it, to exclude people? Hey, I'm not here to say, but I think the conversation needs to be had, and right now is a great time to have it.
Let's continue it. Well yes, said, Tia. Yes, for sure. Tia, thank you for that. Mike, thank you for your time as well.